Welcome to our bonus lab troubleshooting ERG um, a, a routing problem. We've got an ERG RP20 network, and you can see we've got three different networks on our uh, topology here. I've indicated the networks and then the IP addresses for the various devices. So we need to have a logical uh, kind of process, really, otherwise, we're going to be stuck. And a lot of the time, you'll have access to only one router. So um, we'll start off on router one because it's furthest on the left, so it should see the networks um, on route, uh, router 2 and router 3, which are the 19, uh, should see the 192, which is connected, the 172 network, and then the 10 network on the far right. So we start off on the bottom. I, I like to use the OSI model when I'm troubleshooting, just so I've got some sort of logical plan. Show IP route, and there's nothing in the routing table whatsoever. Now, I don't normally um, start off on layer 4, but I just wanted to see if there was any routes at all. And then what we'll do is we'll start at the bottom and work our way up. So if you could see routes in the routing table, um, then it would indicate that the interfaces are all working and that kind of thing. So you wouldn't have had to start at the bottom. So I like to start off with show IP interface brief, which tells us if our interface is up and you can see it's administratively down. That means the um, no shut uh, command hasn't been added to this particular interface. So we should that show IP interface brief. And we need to go in and no shut that interface. There could be other issues as well, but this is the first port of call. Now you can see the uh, informational message there is saying uh, change to down. We would normally expect it to say change to up. Now the diagram will tell you which interfaces should be DCE and DTE, but I'm just confirming with the show controllers command here that uh, we've got the DTE cable plugged in and therefore we know that we don't need a clock rate. This is part of our troubleshooting steps, determining whether or not a clock rate is needed on the interface. So show interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 0. I just want to check the IP address is correct and the subnet mask. Now on the diagram it's saying slash 30 here. However, we've got a slash 24 mask. Now uh, ERGRP is smart enough to work around that issue and probably get it working. However, um, when the software comes to score the lab you'll be losing marks if you haven't spotted this as a potential issue so the show interface command and then the interface name will show you your encapsulation IP address and subnet mask alright so still down but it's been no shutted and no clock rate is required. We've done all we can for now on this router because the interface is down, so there isn't going to be any routing and um, protocols exchanging at the moment. So we'll go over to the next hop router, which is router 2, and it's the same process. The interface should be up. Uh, we definitely know we need a clock rate on this side because it's a DCE interface. All right, the show controllers, yeah, we can see that there's a DCE cable attached and the clock rate is already on there. I'm pretty sure, actually, because um, I'm doing this on Packet Tracer, it automatically adds one, which is a bit frustrating, but never mind. Show IP interface brief, serial 0 slash 0 slash 0 is administratively down. So we had the same issue on router 1. So it's easy just to go in and no shut on that interface. So the interface has changed to uh, state has changed to up. And we've had uh, an OSPF uh, message just appear there. 
we've got the correct IP address and the correct subnet mask encapsulation yeah HDLC it'll tell you in the diagram what it should be otherwise it'll just default to HDLC so it should be able to ping between routers 1 and 2 I'll probably go back to uh, router 1 just to see uh, which networks if any have um, have appeared All right, so I can ping from router one to router two. So it shows we've got IP connectivity. Uh, didn't mean to type that command. Show IP route. All right, so we're missing some networks here. We can see we've got a directly connected network, which is all fine and dandy. We'd expect that now because we've fixed um, the interface issues. All right, so I think we can, for the moment anyway, um, because we're still looking at IP, the IP side interface to interface. We'll go back to router two and then check the uh, serial interface. So interface is up, correct IP address there. I didn't look at the subnet mask yet, but the interface is up nonetheless. Oh, it says up, down, sorry, the second column. So when you see up, down, it usually indicates a, a line protocol issue uh, in the encapsulation. So the show interface and the interface name will tell you the IP address, subnet mask and encapsulation. Now in the exam it will tell you um, what, what the encapsulation should be. So it might, perhaps it should be PPP but at the moment this doesn't say anything. So I presume both sides have to be HDLC. All right, so encapsulation HDLC on the S001 interface. You can see it's come, uh, the interface has come up now, which is good news. So we'll ping across the uh, interface there and we can see we've got IP connectivity now between router two and router three. So while we're here, we'll check the routing configuration. So it should be ERGRP20, which is correct. And then it should list the two uh, connected networks. Not going to worry about anything else at the moment. Automatic summarization is disabled, which is default for this iOS 15. Dot, uh, whatever. Uh, correct networks there, 192.168.1 and 172.16. So all looks good. I can't see any other obvious problems. So now we've fixed router 2, we should really go back to router 1 and see if we can see all of the networks now. So I'll hit the up arrow and we can, okay, we can see the 172 network now. However, we're missing the 10 network, which is the network between router 2 and router 3. So it's the same process really. We go, we're going to go back over there, check the interfaces, the IP address, and uh, we shouldn't. Uh, there won't be a clock rate issue over there because we can ping across the link. Now the 10 network isn't showing on router two either. So router two, it's not as if router two is doing something to prevent the network being advertised, such as access lists or something like that.
All right, we can see the interface is up, which is good news for us. So it must be something else. Subnet mask on the interface shouldn't really affect the routing, but just to be thorough, and again, the script will mark us down or won't give us a point if we've missed out, something like that. You can see the uh, IP address is correct there, slash 28. Is the routing configuration correct? So it should be, as we know from the diagram, ERGRP20, and we should have the 10 and the 172 networks advertised. Show IP protocols, and we can immediately see that there's an issue here. It's saying ERGRP10, and the diagram isn't telling us anything about um, an, an ERGRP10, and there's only one network there, it's a 10 network. So there's two issues. We'll actually solve both by removing EIGRP10 and then we need to add just a couple of uh, lines of configuration to add EIGRP20. EIGRP20 and then network, uh, the 10 network and um, 172 all right show AP protocols and it all looks good there is what should be configured on the uh, router here. Just mentioned earlier, but iOS 15.x automatically summarizes. So if you're used to using an older version, automatically um, automatic summarization is disabled. So the older versions, it was in it enabled. By default. I'll do a show IP route this side and we can see our 192.168 network. The other two are connected. Show IP route on router 1 shows us the 10 network and the 172.16 network, which is exactly what we're looking for. And just as a sanity check, I'm going to ping over the far side onto router 3, which all looks good. So we've proved off everything, and um, hopefully this lab has helped you show a methodical way of going through the troubleshooting steps. Everything's fixed. Correct IP addresses, interface no shutted, clock rates if they needed them, encapsulation, and the uh, routing correctly configured. There's the uh, steps I tend to go through from layers 1 to uh, 4. So uh, we'll come to the end of the lab. Thanks for watching.